Welcome back, Zero K fans. Try three C three with another exhibition match. Veltas versus Ivan D on Coagulation Marsh, and that name does not sound familiar. Coagulation Marsh, not Ivan D. I Ivan D has been actually playing for a little while. That name should be fairly familiar, especially if you have been watching my cast recently. But Coagulation Marsh, Marsh, should not be, because it is a very new map, and as the name suggests, it is a blood-soaked estuary. Let's take a look. So with, see here, we have start location at the southwest and northeast. The map itself rather conveniently shows all the metal spots with these hand in models here. Though it does make the actual values hard to spot, but they are apparently all 1.57. No, almost all 1.57. It looks like it, this was not done using Lua rules, but rather just using a metal map. And yeah, these are not reclaimable by the way, but yeah, the, the models here show where all the metal is. Everything else is just blood-soaked ground and blood-soaked water, which, as you can see, there are paths that are vehicle and infantry passable, but it's going to be difficult unless you're playing Amph or Hover or some other all-terrain factory like that, like water and land factory like that. Which I guess is just those two and the air factories, like those two air gunship. Yeah, the idea thing with this map was to make sea and land well integrated and have a map that caters to both but I really don't know how well you'd be able to do anything because there's these tiny bridges that are nearly underwater I don't think they slow down units I haven't actually tested too much myself which ones do and which ones don't but small bridges this area here is pretty much just cloaky passable only just due to the size I don't know how many vehicles we'd be able to fit in here some of them would I think scorchers would single file but it'd be still difficult over here it'd be a bit easier to fit stuff through but not that easy to go underwater. You kind of see there's this shelf here, so it's it extends out a bit. But it is still rather difficult to get around, especially for a lot of these. This section here kind of dips in enough that I think only amphibs can get in. So it's kind of tricky, and I doubt anyone's going to be using anything other than hover, amph, gunship, and air on this particular map. We'll see, though. Possibly C. I mean, it, that might be a thing to use. Though, a sea factory wouldn't have a whole lot of room. I suppose you could put it over here somewhere, and the ships would be able to go around. I don't think the ships can actually cross these areas. I think they may be too high for the ships. I'd have to test that. I haven't actually had much of a chance to play this map myself, unfortunately. I have seen, like, one game on it, and just looking at everything here, it actually does push my limits on the knowledge of sea and land integration, because that does not come up much. But... Preliminary map analysis aside, let us get on with the game. So Veltha starting in the southwest corner of the map with Amphibious. While Ivan D starting with Hovercraft and Quick Dagger. Nothing beyond that. Amphibious, sorry, Veltha is going for a conch with two ducks afterwards. And Ivan D, well, here's the thing. I should also point out that both the opening sections are fairly defensible. Now, of course... One can go around the back, as you can see there are hills here that are traversable all the way down to the water. But that doesn't seem terribly likely. It seems more likely that attack will come in from the front, at least with the direct attack. So setting static defenses here at the front at this choke point is a good idea. However, that will be the tricky thing about this map, is figuring out where their th things can actually be put. Like the hovercraft, for example, here, or sorry, the amphibot, for example, can't really go up this hill, but could go up this one to go around and then round back and basically deal with all this. I believe it looks like these hills are just barely pathable, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, Hovercraft wouldn't be able to do this. Hovercraft would have no chance whatsoever because Hovercraft, yeah, as you can see, it's showing up black, which would normally be purple, but in this case, yeah, it's this is totally non pathable. Hovercraft cannot go through this water, or if they can, it'd be a very, 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 very small, thin section along here. Yeah, there's one thing about this map that I find is probably problematic, as Chad just pointed out. Pathing. Yeah, that is probably an issue. This has a lot of narrow corridors. Right, this map will be very difficult to path around for units, especially when you get to larger numbers. And given that this map does actually have quite a lot of metal spots, I'd not be surprised if there were problems, ultimately. I mean, they are all but 1.5 each, but still, that's... That is easily about 40 metal spots on this entire map. Even at 1.5 metal each, that's still 60 metal. That's 30 metal each, 
fair, or 20 metal each fairly easily, and 30 metal without actually having to fight. Like, splitting the map evenly is 30 metal each. Not including overdrive, not including any other modifiers like that, just not including reclaim, just off of the spots themselves. That's a lot of metal. For a map that doesn't seem to be that great at supporting more than a few units, factors at a time, like I said, hovercrafts can just avoid that entirely, or almost entirely, hovercrafts and amps, because they can go through the water. Actually, hovercrafts a bit better. Getting onto the land, as you can see, is a little bit harder, because they have to worry about the hills, but getting off, getting onto the water isn't a problem, because they go on top of the water, rather than having to go through the water, and have to deal with the water to land pathing, and the fact that there are these cliff edges underwater that would give amphibious bots a hard time. But not hovers. Of course, defenders still kind of gives hovers a hard time and kill them off pretty quickly, but still. Ivan D's actually not made a terrible choice by playing hover. May not have made the best choice with this map from the looks of it. This is a really weird map from as far as I can tell, but still, hover is actually not that bad. Now, of course, actually dealing with ducks can be a bit tricky, but maces will do fine. Maces kill ducks with no issue. Daggers kill ducks underwater without issue, so that's that's a safe choice. Ducks can, of course, kill daggers pretty quickly, but the cost is about the same. It's 85 for the duck, sorry, 80 for the duck, and 90 for the dagger. Although it looks like Switch to Archer is being done by Failthos rather than going straight for the ducks. Not a bad choice, but still. Maces, oh, I'm going to on that, I can see over here. Maces are easily the best choice against ducks, or at least one of the better choices. Scalpels can work quite well also. Scalpels, I do believe, outrange ducks. Let's see, scalpels have a range of 100... Sorry. Scalpels have a range of 250. Yeah, I don't even have to check. They are outranged by scalpels. Ducks... Ducks could be countered by that. Daggers do a pretty good job, too. Daggers do have shorter range. Very slightly shorter range, but... Yeah. There's just more room for the daggers to move. Like, the water really works more in their favor. The ducks have to go along these paths. There's all these cliffs underwater. There's some areas that, like here, that more ramped, but so many cliffs underwater that the amps just have far more restricted mobility than hovers do. And that will be a problem later in the game. Early on in the game, it's not as big of a deal because the amps can just move around and there's only a handful of them. But once it gets to the point where there are one or two dozen units going around the map, especially with the daggers, Hovercraft's going to have an advantage just due to the fact that they can spread out. They can avoid splash, they can surround, they can do a lot more stuff with that. Well, Amphibious Bot's going to be a bit more restricted. Not apparently entirely though, it's not everywhere that there are cliffs and such. But it's still a thing that does exist around the map. However, archers are stopping the Hovercraft's from getting on here, the daggers don't have the easiest time around that. And they also can't easily get through the defenders, this is like I said before. Maces would do well, Scalpels would do well, but no. Ivan D going entirely for daggers, and if there's any mistake Ivan D is making, it's that. It's just mass daggers. This map is small enough that Maces would be able to go around. Maces and Scalpels would be able to actually move around and do something useful. That, however, is not the case. And yeah, Archers, archers can be. Archers are. I mean, look at this. The Failthos is making those Archers do... All the work. Like I said, once again, outranged by scalpels. Scalpels would definitely do the trick here. And just double check. Scalpels do have, yeah, 450 range. They outrange ducks and archers and have splash. I mean, scalpels would be the go to unit, but no, instead, Ivan D has instead decided to go for gunship plant rather than going for hovercrafts, which I can't say I understand the motivation for. I can sort of understand it, but I just think go for scalpels. Because gunship plant, that's a pretty big fact switch. And it's going to be another 20 seconds before that's done. And in that time, Felthos is gonna just, get, just gonna get more stuff. Admittedly, Felthos is getting airplanes as well, and that's gonna take a lot more time to build. And at this one, Felthos, no, giving up on airplanes, reclaiming that, and instead it looks like they're gonna be focusing heavily on amphibious bots. Now, one thing to point out: the archers can't really hit air as well as the ducks can. Ducks do great against air. Archers not so much. But no, it looks like Felthos is going instead for the gunship plant, and showing off a bug with the factory panel. Carp, they need to go away. Anyway, I'm sure Car Repair will be watching this at some point and that figure out what is going on here, what needs to be going on here. And actually, oh no, oh no, whoa, okay. Looks like I might have been mistaken. No, I was mistaken. 
it is possible for Amphibious Buzz to get into this section here, to get across that hill, but this is still a cliff. Might be in order to stop them going around the outside? Not sure why? It's not like they're going to be falling off the edge of the map or anything, but... Oh well, anyway. Failsoft's still doing a very good job defending with those archers, and Ivan D just decides, you know what, forget that, I'm going to take the map. Hey, go ahead, have your tiny section of the map, I will take the rest of it, thank you very much. Thank you for the fine donation of the rest of the map. I, I accept your concession. Of course, Fail Thoughts, on the other hand, building up gunship plants, building up banshees, and probably going to be saying no while Fail Thoughts does that. I have indeed, however, builds brawlers, and that's, that's a bigger no. That's a much bigger no. Especially since Ivan D has, like I said, more territory... Okay, so far Ivan D just has the northeast out of the map. Doesn't have the southeast yet. Could get it fairly easily, but doesn't have it at the moment. And Felthos is... Well... Expanding slowly but surely towards the northwest that Ivan D's already sort of taken. It's going to come down to... Who uses these... Brawler versus Banshee? I think Brawler's going to win. I mean, Banshee has, Banshee has a bit of a chance, but... One Banshee on one Brawler... Especially seeing that Ivan D does have a stronger economy overall and can just produce these faster and has the daggers which will be able to kill the banshees without issue. So that is not a problem. And these archers have decided to go underwater, which... Well, okay, they all are surfacing to fire, which is actually really cool to watch. I, you don't see archers enough, so that doesn't come up very much. But when it does, it is pretty neat. Just point it out there. I have not seen that happen because no one ever uses archers, including myself. Well, okay, I will use them, but you don't see them on underwater maps very much. I think it's because before they weren't able to surface to fire, or something like that. That looks like a recent change. Really cool change, though. I like that. Nicely done. And Ivan D looks to be trying to take this island away from Felthos. Could easily do so as well. Doesn't want to reveal the brawler too soon, though. I think that's why. However, they have 18 daggers. 18 whole daggers. Stabbing at Failthos's base here. Stabbing at everything. The Banshees are coming in, and they are going to try to come around. But I don't see how they're going to do much. And the Banshees are going to come around, going to hit these defenders, and probably going to die. Especially if they go from the south side. They actually had a pretty good angle where they were before, but... Not anymore. Failthos going from the wrong angle. And try, trying to avoid that defender line entirely. And Ivan D... Might be focused more on defense, but I think with this many daggers, they should just... They should go for a really big kill. Okay, now it's 18. It was 15 before my mistake, but... They should just go for it. Two brawlers are going for it as the daggers move south to defend against the Banshees, which will be able to get rid of all these metal extractors before the daggers get there. Especially seeing as the daggers are clumping up first. They want to get together. Talk about their feelings. Figure out if they actually really agree about this war, whether it's really worth fighting. Now's not a good time for that, though, so Ivan D... Puts a stop to that, gets them over, f trying to kill those Banshees, and actually, yeah, the Metal Shards are still down. However, so are the Banshees now, because daggers can hit air, can hit air very effectively. Having a bit of a harder time with the Archers, though. Actually, much harder time with the Archers. Solo Collectors acting as a bit of a shield that helps a slight amount. However, the Brawlers are the bigger story. Having already gotten rid of this northern island, moving south... Basically getting rid of the same metal extractors, but on Felthos' side. And Felthos has no anglers at the moment, just getting one right now. And also getting some tridents. So tridents and anglers being built up in order to try to deal with everything that Ivan D's throwing out. And Ivan D will be getting tridents of their own, while also going for maces. Finally going for maces! I've just been saying this the entire game. I've only been saying this since the game started. I mean, no, not, not that long. And Ivan D also got some flails too, which is really nice, because... The thing with the Banshee, the problem with the early Banshee, as opposed to early Brawler, is that you throw the early Banshee out and your opponent knows you're going air, so they just build anti-air, and when your opponent is Hovercraft, when your opponent's playing Hovers of all factories, you do not want them to get anti-air. Because flails. 1300 health, and they deal like 300 damage a shot, no, 375 damage a shot. Now, 5 seconds a shot, yes, but still. What's their range again? 800 range. So they outrange pretty much everything in the air to me, even Brawlers. Brawlers are 650. There might be some things that outrange, but Brawler is pretty much air artillery. So if Flails outrange that, you know you're in trouble. And they do. So really, 
Failthos pretty much conceded the air. However, Failthos on the other hand is going around the back and wants to just take this out completely. I don't know how successful this is going to be. I mean, I really don't because it's actually rather difficult to see underwater. Oh no, never mind. This is looks like this will in fact be successful. Yeah, I think this area is passable by bots. So I think it will be possible for them to go along this section here and go up. We'll see though. I'm not totally confident in that. Oh, I'm also upside down. Not totally confident in that. However, Ivan D basically just needs to push in with the brawlers and will win. Or very nearly. There are three anglers up in a pretty opportune position, but the brawlers could just go around. And there come the archers going around the back. And none of them look like they're going to die, in fact, getting rid of the lotuses. Actually, one of them will die getting rid of the lotuses. But, oh no, just barely keeps it alive. Needs to put that in the water, though. That should go back into the water to heal up. And that's exactly what's happening. Nicely done, Felthos. Felthos knows what they're doing. Nice, nice attack there. Mace stomping it in his tracks, but still, that was a really good attack. And Felthos can just hang out there. The Mace can't hit underwater, so there's no way that Ivan D can really put a stop to this happening again. Other than building up even more stag defenses, like a Stinger or something. And then, of course, Felthos could go around here. However, I should point out that there are four Brawlers in play. The cat's already out of the bag there, Felthos. Granted, Ivan D... Oh, okay, actually, that did refresh. Hmm. Anyway, Ivan D is... Well, a bit behind economically, but still. Has enough Brawlers. Can deal with this. Can attack this... Oh, can't attack this directly. There are too many Tridents in play. That does pose a problem. The Periphery can be harassed, though. And just want to... Ivan D does not actually have a whole lot of knowledge. Ivan D is not going for radar, while Felthos definitely is. Felthos has enough radar to see their entire half of the map. And also see a fair amount of Ivan D's territory. While Ivan D does not have very much radar at all, it has to be basically relying on these brawlers finding stuff as it happens. Which is not the best strategy. Well, there are five tridents here compared to three tridents inside. Oh no, just leaving Felthos's base, going for the brawlers. Now, Ivan D does have these tridents in a bad spot. They are out of position. Yeah, they are way out of position. The brawlers... They do not want to attack the Tridents directly. The Tridents are going around. So, Feldas' Tridents coming in, and Ivan D's Tridents focusing down one of them. One goes down, second one goes down, and the third one will go down shortly after. Leaving the Brawlers all the room they need to attack, although, admittedly, they are pretty heavily damaged. Now, of all these Brawlers, only one of them is at full health. Most of them are about half health or so. But still, they can now basically move back in with impunity. Feldas still has one Trident left. Well, two tridents actually, and more are being oops, more are being constructed. That's all Felthos is building. On the other hand, Ivan D is building brawlers and tridents, and actually running out of metal. Ivan D really needs to rebuild this. There was some looks like a small attempt to rebuild this. This has to be rebuilt. Workers need to go down here, a quill or something. Just go down here and rebuild this, because Felthos is taking all this territory, and that's going to ultimately win Felthos the game if Ivan D is not careful. Now, Ivan D does have some skeeters being built up in a sea factory, but. Still, this is not a good sign. Felthos is, or at least not for Ivan D. Felthos is basically coming back in here just because Ivan D is letting them. Now, a brawler coming down here to try to stop this expansion attempt, which, while useful, is only half the battle. Ivan D still needs to re-expand. Ivan D is getting some quills here, but they're basically being used just to push more metal into the factory to get more quills. And that's all that's being built from the Hovercraft factory right now. And like I said, more brawlers are being built, and there's... Still six brawlers, most of which are defending against these archers. Well, defended against the archers. The archers are now quite dead. Oh no, not quite dead. What am I saying? They have moved away. They're very much alive. They're undamaged, in fact, due to the healing from the water. They're getting out of the way. Felthos is really putting a lot of pressure on I'm and D with those five archers. That is a huge game changer right there. I mean, Felthos, I think because of that, I'm and D is being too defensive, allowing Felthos to take this entire south side of the map and... Getting a little overconfident, though, thankfully for Ivan D, this hill was in the way. Stopping the Trident from attacking the Brawler while the Flail attacks the Trident, ultimately killing it. There it goes. That Trident takes the hit, goes down. Clean kill right there. That Flail had no problems there. And the Brawler did live. So ultimately, all's well for Ivan D's army. Not so much for Ivan D's economy, but definitely for Ivan D's army. 10k in the army, though. So, less metal, more army. Felthos basically just been losing a lot more units. A lot of the units have been tridents, and... 
They've been going down. They've been going down to other tridents. They've been going down to flails. They've been going... That's about it, really. And these archers coming up again, getting rid of the quills. Like I said, Ivan D has had a lot of pressure on them just because of these archers. Keeping the quills in, keeping... Like, Felthos really can just stop anything. They know about the expansions over here. They know about expansion attempts over here. They can just stop pretty much everything that Ivan D does not have tightly locked. And that's exactly what's happening. But Felthos is still 2k metal behind in terms of army. And in come the disarmed Skeeters, trying to stop the archers outright, but not enough of them in range, unfortunately. And just, I think this is bad coordination, too. These brawlers, they need repairs. And a lot of them are pretty heavily damaged. And these workers are not repairing the brawlers. But no, Ivan is just throwing in the towel. I, wow, okay, I guess they just got bored. According to the chat, refuse to play this game further. Yeah, that is... Well, that was the game. I'm a little bit surprised that Ivan D actually lost that. Because, honestly, Ivan D just had to push. Like, at that point, it was pretty much just push in with everything. Probably sweeping along the north side and then going south from there. I mean, there were some tridents around. But Ivan D had his own, or had their own. There were some razors around, but... I mean, the Skeeters could disarm those. I don't know, I guess Ivan G just kind of got bored of that. But anyway, again, another game between the two of them. That happened just afterwards, so I guess that's what Ivan D was giving up for. It's gonna be on Lowland Crossing, which... Oh dear. <sighs> well, anyway, it's gonna be on Lowland Crossing, which is a map that can be kind of turtly. See how that goes, though. I mean, we might have the same thing happen again, but I don't know. Anyway, be back in a couple minutes or so with that. Stay tuned.